science is my favorite subject. Narrative. Narrative in science communication. Narrative is just a word that means the structure, the particular structure of telling a story. That's it. All right. And here's some quotes to start off with. According to the narrative paradigm, humans are homo narrans, storytelling animals who are persuaded to make decisions based on the co coherence and fidelity of stories. I really like this quote from Oliver Sacks, who was an excellent writer and neuroscientist. Each of us is a singular narrative which is con constructed continuously, unconsciously, by, through, and in us, through our perceptions, our feelings, our thoughts, our actions, and not least, our discourse, our spoken narrations. And from a science um, educator, we are literally the stories we tell. So, what is narrative? Uh, so, as I said, it's simply the, the particular structure of telling a story, and it, it comprises a series of elements, which include the setting. So, this is uh, um, the background, basically, the, the setting, the characters, a narrator, a series of past events in a time sequence, and a narrative structure. So, what is this narrative structure? Broadly, narrative structure consists of four elements. It's very simple. An introduction, background, setting the scene, all right? So we know what, what, where we are, what's going on at the outset. Then you have a trigger or a hook. This, this is the introduction of a problem or a conflict, okay? Um, so let's say, for example, uh, it's a Sunday morning. I've just woken up. I'm really looking forward to sitting around watching Netflix all day. I could get, I could do with going out for a cup of coffee first. So I go out the door. Oh, and just as the door shuts behind me, I realize I haven't brought my keys. There's the hook. Now we're thinking, what's going to happen? How's she going to get back inside? So on. Okay. There has to be a hook. Then there's a series of events, actions that take place in order to address the problem. I had to go next door to my neighbor and wake her up. I didn't know her very well, but she let me in. And then she made me a cup of coffee. We sat down. We had a great conversation. All right. A series of events happen. And then later on, my flatmate come home and uh, I was able to get back inside. And it was a really good day because I just didn't sit around watching Netflix. I got to know my neighbor. It was fantastic. So there's a resolution that usually reveals a moral. So that wasn't a very interesting story, but there's a, there's a conclusion to the story. I got to know my neighbor and that was better than sitting around watching Netflix all day. So four elements. And um, Haven, who wrote a book on, um, on storytelling, uh, and in particular in relation to science, summarized narrative structure this way. A detailed character-based character narration of a character's struggles to overcome obstacles and reach an important goal. All right, now some scientists are a bit cautious about adopting storytelling in science communication because maybe they're uh, worried about the link with fiction, all right? And storytelling doesn't necessarily mean fiction. You can tell factual information using a narrative structure. Um, but it, it's also quite often from uh, of far from their usual means of communicating, which is just explaining how things happen in a, in a factual way, all right? But... And, and there is one uh, there is one element of narrative structure or uh, narrative um, uh, that can be a little bit challenging for scientists, and that's the role of character. So it's great. It's really it makes narrative much better if you have a character, which is a little bit um, sometimes a bit more challenging with science communication because it's usually not about people; it's about things or processes. So. But if you can find a way to bring character into, into the story, if you are part of the story, for example, or somebody else, or even making something in the story a character in a way, then that can be useful. But aside from the issue of character, science actually fits quite well into this structure. Um, okay, so, um, so you can see that if you think about a scientific publication, for example, you always have a background, an introduction, you set, set the scene of the context in which you're working. Then you have to have some kind of hypothesis, a problem that you're trying to address. There's your trigger, okay? Um, then you have a, a method. This is how you approach your problem. You did this and then you did this. This is a sequence of actions, all right? 
here it is. And then finally, you reach some conclusion, okay? Or something happens in the end, it gives meaning to the whole, there's some change. So actually, science often fits fairly well, if you think about it, into a narrative structure. So, okay, we can put science into a narrative structure, but why would we, all right? Okay, well, stories are the primary way that humans have communicated for millennia. And various studies have concluded that this is related to the way our brains work. It's the way uh, storytelling is related to the way the brain processes, structures, and interprets information. Um, lots of different research suggests that story structure matches our human neural networks. It's how we make sense of the world from birth, and it's common across all cultures. And what this means that narratives is just not a, it's not just a style of communication, it's actually fundamental to the way that our, that our minds work. Storytelling appears to be an integral component of what makes us human. So communicating using a narrative structure, by doing this, you're making it much easier for your audience to understand and engage with you. And the science supports that. Um, so various studies have shown that in contrast to ex an expository structure where, for example, I stand up here and tell you, oh, this is what the, the, the science is, I just explain the facts to you, uh, that, that narrative is more engaging, it's more enjoyable, it's more memorable, it's more persuasive, and it's more quickly and fully comprehended. People tend to become lost in a story. They imagine themselves as a part of it. That's known as narrative transformation. And uh, in one study, uh, individuals who reported being narratively transported into a story about climate change experienced higher empathy and they were more likely to exhibit story consistent beliefs and pro-social behavior in real life. That means that those people who felt connected to the stories were likely to act. And this is particularly the case where emotional narrative is used. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, could you explain uh, what you mean by uh, expository structure of communication? Yes. So this is expository structure is just simply describing things. Okay. Um, so um, if. Uh, uh, let's say I'm talking about a uh, scientific publication on a geoscientific data set, then I would describe that um, our intention was to carry out this survey. This is how we did it. These were the results. Uh, these are the conclusions that we reached. Uh, with a narrative structure, I might incorporate myself into the story more. Um, I might focus on what was a real challenge here, what was, what was actually the big problem that we were trying to solve. Um, so it's more of a story. Expository is just a simple f explanation of the facts. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna tell you a story here and you've probably gathered by now why I've told you a few stories today. Um, a few weeks ago, I was at a friend's house in Brussels with her family and her mother told me a story that I found upsetting. She told a story about how a migration centre in Brussels with hundreds of migrants, including lots of migrants from Ukraine fleeing the war, where all of these migrants had just been turned out onto the street for a period of four days because of some bureaucratic issue that they meant, meant that they had to close for a few days. And these people weren't given anywhere to go they were just turned out on the, on the street and it was cold and I was really upset by this. And when I was going home later that evening, I was taking the metro, a man in the metro approached me and asked me for some money and said that he hadn't had anything to eat for a couple of days. And normally I might give a few coins to a homeless person but I almost burst into tears and, um, and I gave him a lot more money than I would normally give somebody. Um, and I have no idea whether this guy was affected by this situation or not. But I re reacted in response to that emotional story that I'd heard earlier that evening because I empathised with the characters in that story who were suddenly homeless and I could imagine myself or my family in that position. And my actions were completely in line with the scientific evidence which says 
that there's an increased occurrence of pro-social behaviour as a result of empathetic engagement and narrative transport. This um, uh, getting lost in a story, feeling that you become part of it, is known as the narrative effect. All right. And just going back to what we've sort of discussed to some degree before, um, this is from another study related to, uh, to research on people's re reaction to um, uh, climate change. People's beliefs in actions, this, in this regard, in relation to climate change, are minimally influenced by scientific fact-based communication. <coughs> it's affected by all sorts of other reasons. Um, this relates to um, a study that was done. Um, there were a series of experiments to see how the structure of information about climate change affected the response of the audience. So in this case, they did these experiments where groups of people had to either read or watch environmental content related to climate change. Uh, in one case, it was structured as narratives, so stories. In one case, as just factual, straight factual information about climate change, and then they had a control control group who just who didn't who just read something that wasn't actually related to climate change at all, and and uh, and was factual. So those that read or watched the narrative structured information were far more likely to then engage in environmentally friendly behaviours even after weeks than the others. And in fact, the group that was given the factual information was the least likely to engage in environmentally friendly behaviours. It made them worse than the control group. And there are some suggestions as to why that might be the case, that people feel overloaded by environmental climate change information and they disengage, okay? But if they're given it in a narrative format, they actually act on it. Narratives, stories, help us to experience um, the information. They heighten the way that we feel. They, they, we have an emotional, re emotional response and we've already talked about how emotion actually drives action. Okay, how about narrative in geoscience? Well, in actual fact, it turns out that within the sciences, geology is pretty is, is perhaps particularly well suited to narrative communication because unlike physics or chemistry, geology is not generally a science that um, can be addressed using experiments. I mean, in some cases it can, but usually not. So for example, if you're looking at the eye structure of a trilobite, for example, uh, or the exact nature of, of a particular mineral deposit, um, given slightly different initial circumstances, those two things might be completely different. For example, mineral deposits, there's no two ones that are exactly the same. So, um, so usually uh, um, describing uh, our understanding of geology, it, it, it often doesn't give us a universal um, understanding of processes, but nonetheless, we can scientifically explain geoscience. Um, so geology often requires the explanation of unique and particular events, which are actually can be, you can get those across really quite effectively using um, narrative. Um, and for example, how did life evolve on, on Earth? Uh, this is a question where there's a focus on the past, a series of events, causal relationships, a coherent story. Um, you can describe this within a narrative structure. Okay, now I'm going to um, I'm going to tell you a very short story. Um, first of all, told in a fairly factual way. So, <coughs> this is a true story. In 1993 in Pasto, Colombia, nine geologists died during a conference field trip when the volcano they were visiting erupted while they were inside the crater. Critics argued that the expedition leader, Stanley Williams, who was also badly injured in the eruption, should have known that the danger level was too high and should have had better safety measures in place. Only two expedition members wore hard hats. Williams also did not take into account a new seismic method presented at the same conference that showed evidence that the volcano was on the verge of erupting. 
So all the information there is, is, is an interesting story. But now it's restructured a bit in terms of a more narrative structure. So in 1993, volcanologists met in Pasto, Colombia on the slopes, slopes of the active Galeras volcano. While they discussed volcano research, gas pressure inside the volcano was building. Two scientists at the conference detected the dangerous pressure increase using a new scientific seismic method, but oblivious to the new research, geologist Stanley Williams led an expedition of 15 onto the volcano. Only two wore hard hats. While the geologists were inside the crater, the volcano erupted explosively. Nine expeditioners died, and several, including Williams, narrowly escaped with their lives. It's basically the same information, but you probably agree with me that it's a little bit more engaging in this format, yeah? Okay, so can you identify the four elements of narrative here? Number one, the background, introduction. Where's that? Sorry? Second sentence. Second sentence? Uh, the background? Not quite. It's the first sentence. So we know where we are. It tells us where we are when we are on the side of the volcano. What's the trigger? The hook. The second element of narrative. The second sentence is the hook, right? While I discussed volcano research, gas pressure inside the volcano was building, right? Now we know there's a problem, there's a, there's a conflict there. Something is going to happen, right? Okay, then we have to have a series of events, yeah? So, series of events. The scientists detected the gas pressure and using a new method. The geologist led an expedition onto the volcano. Um, and then the volcano erupts. These are all events that happen in relation to the hook, which is the gas pressure building inside the volcano. And finally, the fourth element, element the, the resolution, the change. Yeah? So the last sentence. The last sentence. Nine expeditioners died, including Williams, and some na who narrowly escaped with his life. That was the conclusion. Four elements in the right order gives a much stronger engagement, okay? But still the same information. So there are the four elements. If you can put your, just try and reframe your communication into a narrative structure. You don't have to make things up. You don't have to over-dramatise. But if you can put it in the right order and make sure you've got each of those elements, you'll find that it's easier to connect. All right. Um, in the interest of time, I am going to skip this part, but um, you will get this in your notes, and this relates to um, studies of what actually makes uh, news newsworthy, okay? Uh, these are in order of uh, um, importance in terms of analysing news stories, seeing what newspapers or news um, outlets recognize as being the most newsworthy themes. And this may help you. And again, I'm not telling you to try and push your information into any one of these. But if you happen to find that, for example, you have a celebrity involved in something to do with your science, or uh, there's an unexpected result, uh, for example, then these are things that you can use to push forward in your communication because people will be more interested in them. And journalists in particular will be more interested in them. This, was, this is actually quite an old study from 1965, but it's um, uh, well established in the journalistic community as, um, uh, as standing the test of time. And more recently, another study along the same lines came up with very similar results and also identified some new elements um, that, uh, that are particularly newsworthy. As is perhaps not unsurprising, bad news is, uh, is newsworthy, but so is good news as well. Cures for diseases, for example, things like this. Rescues are really newsworthy. The magnitude, the element of surprise and so on. But uh, I won't go into it now because I, I don't want to use too much time. 
Um, but I'm happy to talk to you about these things if you're interested. And it may be useful if you can find elements uh, that, uh, that you can hook into with your own stories. All right. I would love to talk to you more about stories, but um, I just want to conclude by saying that, um, again, stories are how we naturally communicate. If you can reframe your communication into a narrative, you will find it much easier to, to get a communication going and usually to get more understanding of what you're trying to say. You don't have to make things up. Just put it in that structure. Four elements. It's much more effective.